mass extinctions. What are the mass extinctions? How many there were on our planet? Why? Let's talk about that. When you look on the geochronology table, you see that all the life constantly changing there. For the last half billion of the years, animals evolved, strife on our planet, and then something caused them to almost extinct totally. And then new wave of new life flash on the planet, and then new change caused new evolution on our planet with a new species developing. Let's try to understand how it's happening, why, and is it normal for our planet. Since multicellular organisms developed on our planet, the life become complex and occupied all the spheres of our planet, water, air, and land. You can see for last 550 million years, we have a lot of different lives changing constantly. And it's very good for us because we use it to date old deposits and to recreate this geochronology table. See my previous video about geochronology. But is it normal that we're constantly losing different types of animals on our planet and you taking their place? Let's talk about communities of animals who are prone to extinct. So if you have evolution happening, animals constantly developing on our planet, the older ones, the ones who we develop from, should or die out or evolve. Otherwise, our planet will be filled with all sorts of animals in all stages of evolution. It's not happening right now. So why are these older communities evolving? The group of animals who are prone to evolve or extinct, there are those are who are large animals and they're high in the food chain. So if some small changes happening throughout the environment or the food chain, they'll be first to respond. Then very small populations as well, they're not sustainable and they will extinct or evolve faster. Complex communities which rely on other species, more prone to extinct as well and very specialized organisms so with specialized ecological requirements, so they're not very sustainable as well. And the way how they will evolve to extinct will depend on the pressure, evolutionary selection pressure which apply to them. So it's a pressure which is applied to this community or population of organisms to actually cause the change in them. And they will all evolve or they will just extinct forever. We differentiate low pressure cause just slowly, gradually change for these communities and they become long-lived and if they're not surviving that, they will probably be just extinct. And we have a high pressure. High pressure could be something that react very fast or very demanding and these organisms, they don't have time to evolve or adjust to new conditions and they need to respond by extinction. And often extinction happening over the evolution. So some organisms evolving, but some inevitably will die out. We differentiate different types of extinction, internal, like predatory and prey relationships, like growth of one population over the other and competition for space or for some food nutrition supply. We have external type of pressure, such as environmental change, sea level change, change of composition of atmosphere or water, temperature, and also change in the food supply, nutrition available for these organisms as well. Therefore, the extinction is inevitable. Otherwise, as I mentioned before, if all evolved organisms stayed with ancient ones, the ancestors, our planet will be overwhelmed with too many species, too many complex organism relationships, and it won't be sustainable. We have different levels of this pressure on these organisms. So it could be just a long-term persistent pressure, which cause slow change in this species community. For example, competition between different species. We have environmental types of pressure. It's a long term, but inevitably, if the environment dramatically changes, animals need to or evolve or extinct. And we have events which happen very fast and just destroying communities in the one event, such as meteorite impact or some volcanic eruptions. Meteorite impact, which will just dramatically change all environment on the planet for several years or even hundred years or thousands of years and many species will not recover from that. With volcanic eruption the atmospheric composition changes, there's a lot of serum, carbon dioxide, exposure into the atmosphere and not all species will survive after that. 
When we look at our time table, we see that in the last 450 million years, we have spikes of dramatic extinction. This graph shows the number of extinct species throughout the history of times. And of course, there are some animals we can observe who are extinct. Like, for example, in recent human history, there's a lot of animals extinct, like more birds in New Zealand. And we know they were there, we observed them, and now they've just extinct. But there's also numerous animals which we're not aware are extinct, and they doing so every day. Insects, type of small organisms, type of sea organisms, which we don't see, and we don't think this happening with them. But the extinction happen on our planet all the time especially since the humans affecting the environment very fast. In the history of the Earth, usually these extinct events will be related to environment changes or some dramatic events like meteorite impact. For example, if we look on famous Ordovic extinction, which happened about 440 million years ago, it was a time which happened great cooling on our planet. We're not going to talk about the reasons why. There's many conspiracies and theories why this cooling event happened, but we definitely know that the planet was warm before, there was no ice on the poles, the ocean was circulating in a way that it's redistributed the heat equally everywhere, and it was a very nice and good condition for life to strive. Then something happened and cooling event changed the ocean work and the extinction followed. Drop of sea level and this cooling event caused extinction for almost 85% of species who was on the planet at the time, according to scientists. However, the planet recovered from that. There was a long term of about 100 million years of more warmer periods, and ecosystems become more stable again, and it was a pretty good time for them to live on our planet. Until next big event, which was rapid increase of the temperature on the planet in the Permian time, which caused another extinction event. It was the biggest extinction. There was a too dramatic increase in the temperature on a planet, change of climate, and animals couldn't adapt as fast. And we lost about 96% species on the whole planet, 65 families. After that, you can see that there was a gradual recovery with some smaller extinctions on the way, but animals had fairly warm climate in Mesozoic times, and the evolution spiked their time, of course. So you can see Permian extinction was the biggest so far on our planet in the history of the animals. And before that, we have long time when the environment was fairly stable and the animals have time to evolve and live for longer times. After the Permian extinction, again, when the environment stabilized, organisms had opportunity to recover and slowly evolving in the not so much dramatically changed environment. Mesozoic time, famous for reptile strive on our planet, and you know it by all famous dinosaurs developing on our planet, and also a beginner of the bird's age. Then we have the terminal mass extinction in Mesozoic time, 66 million years ago. One of the most dramatic extinction we know about when all the dinosaurs die out on our planet, and scientists convinced that it wasn't environmental change as much, that it was a meteorite impact. It was a dramatic event we see all around the planet in geological record, and it's an abrupt event which caused extinction of most of the reptiles on our planet. Since then, we had fairly warm period of time, evolution take place, and only the last 20 million years, we have colder climate on the planet when ice ages come in place. We start having ice everywhere. And in the blink of the history of the planet, humans came. And the moment when humans came, scientists suggesting the biggest mass extinction right now on our planet, happening by impact of us. In the future, we'll see the effect of last mass extinction, which is happening right now on our planet. And the main question remained if the ecosystem will have time to adopt or will lose many families forever. However, it's the first time in the history of the planet there's a too short time for animals to evolve and adapt for very rapidly changed environment due to the human activity. Therefore, we might lose forever many families and species on our planet. 
like already happening these days. For example, Chinese dolphin was last seen in 2007. It was the last animal of the species which died. Therefore, our children will never see alive this animal anymore. But the history shows us that animal world will evolve no matter what a catastrophe happening on this planet. Therefore, like since meteorite killed most of the reptiles on our planet, or dramatic climate change in Permian time caused almost full extinction of animals on the planet, in the many thousands and millions of years, the new types of animals will evolve and occupy our planet all over again.